Hey guys, how's it going? This is Watch from the MW Technology Channel on YouTube. And in this video, we'll be doing a direct comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the HTC One. Now on paper, these phones look very, very similar. They're both 1080p quad-core latest Android smartphones. And really, they're the top dogs in terms of Android smartphones currently available right now so a lot of people are interested in how they kind of fare up against each other and even though they're fairly similar in terms of spec there are some subtle differences that may determine you to pick one over the other so let's go over some of those major differences and see if either phone is right for you so the first thing that we'll compare is the physical design and dimensions of both these two devices. Starting with the Samsung Galaxy S4 measures about 136.6 millimeters in height, 69.8 millimeters in width, and uh, this is about a little bit wider than the HTC One, which measures about 68.2 millimeters in width and about 137.4 millimeters in height. Now the HTC One is just a bit thicker than the Samsung Galaxy S4 measuring about 9.3 millimeters versus this S4 measuring at 7.9 millimeters. Now you guys should understand that the S4 is made out of lightweight, high quality plastics and the HTC One is made out of a lot of aluminum products and pretty high quality materials overall. And with that, of course, you're going to expect to see a little bit of a weight difference between these two devices. So the HTC One is measuring about 143 grams versus the S4 measuring about 130 grams. Now if you hold both those devices, you will notice that weight difference uh, quite substantially. Of course, the HTC One really feels like it's made like a solid brick and uh, the weight is not really that big of a concern once you actually feel the materials that it's made out of. And of course, it's nicer to have a lighter product and uh, some people may prefer the lighter weight of the Samsung Galaxy S4, but you really have to see them and feel them in, in a physical experience to determine that otherwise. Now in terms of screen dimension, the Samsung Galaxy S4 is about 5 inch and the HTC One is about 4.7 inches. Now as we mentioned before, both these two devices boast a 1920 by 1080 screen. That's a really high resolution screen for a smartphone and a lot of phones are coming out with super high resolution displays. But one of the things that I want to mention is that a lot of people are not aware that these two screens are actually quite different in terms of how they display images. Images. And it's really going to be displayed if we start to blow up these screens at the microscopic level and see how these millions and millions of dots make an image. Traditionally, a pixel on any display is made up of three primary colors, red, green, and blue. So each of these smaller sections of the pixel is known as a subpixel. So traditionally you have three subpixels in one individual pixels made up of red, green, and blue. And most LCD screens are made by aligning all these strips of red, green, and blue subpixels into a huge array, which is really laid in a linear fashion as you see over here. And what we're looking at right now is the RGB strip matrix of the HTC One. It looks exactly like this if you point it under a microscope. Now funny enough, a lot of screens made by different consumer electronics companies are not manufacturing their displays like this. They're using different techniques to actually use less subpixels because of course if you use more pixels it's going to be expensive to make. So a lot of people are trying to make a screen that uses less than three subpixels. And a great example of this notion is the exact screen of the Samsung Galaxy S4, which is using a hexagonal pentile display. So meaning that you have traditionally less overall subpixels than what you typically find in a standard RGB screen, such as the one found in the HTC One. So when we take a closer look at the Samsung Galaxy S4's display, you'll notice a diagonal strip of red and green pixels repeating throughout the display. And right beside each strip of red-green subpixels, we have a strip of 
blue-green subpixels. So essentially what the GS4 is doing is alternating between subpixels in order to create all the colors of the rainbow while still reducing the overall number of subpixels in the whole screen. So when we start comparing the screen density of the GS4 versus the HTC One, you'll notice that the HTC One has a lot more subpixels. And with that result, what you will notice is that the true PPI count of the HTC One is a lot higher than on the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now in real life, when you look at these two displays in person, you'll notice that they look both equally as good. The Samsung definitely still delivers some really sharp looking images. The text, everything about it in terms of screen wise is still great. So this whole argument of real RGB strip matrix versus pentile displays is kind of irrelevant to anybody using the phone on a day-to-day -day basis who's not going to be critically analyzing it from two to three centimeters away from the screen, which is no way to use any of these devices. Now from a pure specification perspective, the HTC One has a finer pixel per square inch count of 469 versus the S4's 441. Obviously, that you're not going to be able to see that difference from a acceptable distance away, but if we're going to analyze it critically, the HTC One has the finer screen. That being said, the Samsung Galaxy S4 has the AMOLED display, which is definitely going to produce some really vibrant colors that Samsung is famous for, as well as the deepest black levels you will find on a cell phone right now. So if you're anyone who uses this to watch movies uh, late at night, you definitely will notice that any part where there is black, the phone will actually turn off the screens because the OLED produces its own light. So it's definitely the next generation of screen technology in terms of illumination, but its pentile display is obviously not as dense as the one found in the HTC One. Now in terms of what comes inside these two devices is also fairly similar. The Samsung Galaxy S4 is running a quad-core processor running at about 1.9 gigahertz with 2 gigs of RAM. Now we should also take note that there is an 8-core version of the S4 that we don't have available to us right now, but it should give you even better performance than this current version. Now the HTC One also comes with a quad-core processor, but clocked in about 1.7 gigahertz with two gigs of RAM. So in terms of performance, these machines are pretty much identical. Applications really load up really at the same time. The performance on these two phones in terms of everyday usage is really negligible. However, the Samsung Galaxy S4 does have a edge when we start doing benchmarks and doing critical tests on the GPU and CPU specifically. Our Geekbench score on the S4 measured about 3228 and the HTC One got about 2607. So based on some of these tests and some of the things that we've done in terms of gaming, you will notice that the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a little bit of an edge in terms of processing power based on its newer hardware and uh, depending on what kind of applications that you use will take advantage of that processing power. But currently, if you're just using average, everyday applications such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you're not going to see a big difference. Now, even though these two smartphones are using the latest generation of Android currently available to them, they're actually running their own proprietary skin over the Android operating system. The Samsung Galaxy S4 is using a system called TouchWiz, and if you've ever used any of their Galaxy products, you will pretty much know how the Samsung Galaxy S4 looks like in terms of OS. The HTC uses something called HTC Sense, which actually has a really cool home screen. It's kind of like a flipboard style and it goes through your different aspects of your social media network such as Facebook, Twitter, and it basically cycles through your different social media outlets. You can also add new feeds that you have a particular interest in such as gaming, tech, general news, science, special articles, etc. Now we can probably go on for days listing all the different unique features of both of these two devices. But what we're going to do is specifically just highlight some of the key features that I really like to use in both these two devices and what really makes them shine as individual products. So starting with the HTC One, first and foremost it probably has 
one of the best speaker systems on a smartphone period ever made. It's using Beats Audio to enhance the overall kind of sound of everything that you listen to, which overall does a pretty good job. It's kind of a compressor and has an equalization feature. It sometimes interferes depending on what you're listening to if you want to find out how things exactly sound, if they're raw without any processing. You can turn that feature off otherwise, but in terms of the speakers themselves, I do have to say that the layout of them is just perfect. There's so many phones out there that have the speaker pointing the wrong way, either on the back or on the side of the actual product. But these are stereo speakers facing right towards the user without any interruptions. And they have a lot of good bass response and uh, good frequencies overall for their size. They're definitely not going to sound like a fully sized proper speaker that you would have in your home stereo or even a speaker dock but it's definitely great for having it just on the cell phone. The other great feature about the HTC One is its overall build quality. It really puts it above and beyond what most smartphones do besides the Apple iPhone. It's made out of really high quality aluminums. It's machined extremely well. Everything about it is just precise and extremely mechanical. It seems like a really premium and luxurious product to use which is kind of ironic because it's actually less expensive than the GS4. Now obviously there's many many benefits to the new Samsung Galaxy S4 that we can list on for days. It offers some really cool next generation augmented features which allows you to swipe back and forth over the phone to uh, control different aspects of the phone such as swiping to browse through your photos to scroll up and down in web pages it does a lot of eye tracking stuff so it monitors your eye and uh, makes sure that the phone is awake as long as you're looking at it it also has a great smart pause feature which allows you to play and pause your videos depending on whether you're looking at the screen or not Another great feature is the air view features that the Samsung Galaxy S4 has, which allows you to kind of hover your finger over the phone and it automatically magnifies what's under there so you can get a better view at some tightly dense uh, pieces of text or browse through different photo applications and a lot of other cool features. Another great feature is the quick glance mode, which allows you to just hover your hand over the phone and it automatically wakes up and tells you some important information such as your battery life, email, and missed calls. Okay, so besides some of the unique features on both these two devices, let's take a look at the cameras and see how they fare against each other. So let's begin by testing out the front-facing cameras of both these two devices. Now, both the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the HTC One record up to 1080p at 30 frames per second on just the front-facing camera alone. Now when you review the footage from the HTC One and the S4's front facing camera, you'll notice that the HTC One produces a little bit more of a brighter image overall. That may mean that its camera is a little bit more sensitive to light on the front facing camera. But both of them nonetheless look very, very similar. Colors are very, very similar. I don't think any one camera is better than the other. So they're pretty much the same on the front facing camera side. Now if we take a look at the rear facing camera, you'll notice a pretty big difference in terms of how these cameras actually work and capture light and images. You'll notice that the Samsung can capture a lot higher resolution image at 13 megapixels versus the HTC's 4 megapixel stills camera at the back. Of course what we need to understand is the way that each camera captures light is different in each regard. The Samsung S4 is using that traditional more megapixels is better the higher the resolution the better and uh, it's kind of really using that sensor to its fullest potential in terms of resolution now what the HTC one is doing is pretty much taking as much light input as possible and making the image as vibrant and as bright as possible because if you've ever done any photography you know the more light you have the better and higher quality that image is going to be the cleaner and less 
noise you're going to have. So basically what they're introducing is a technology called ultra pixels. That means that each pixel is individually getting much more light, almost 300% more than what you would traditionally find on a camera like the S4. So what does that translate into real life photos? Now, if we take a look at the side by side images that we've shot with the S4 versus the HTC One using the rear facing camera, you'll notice that they're both pretty much on par in terms of most aspects of the image. Now, obviously they render colors differently. You'll see that the S4 is a little bit warmer than the HTC One. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's better or, or more accurate. It just means that it's auto exposing system might have estimated a different Kelvin level. Before taking the photo, I made sure that the settings on both of the cameras were as similar as possible, but obviously you can't control everything on these automatic cameras. But basically you'll notice that the HTC One has a little bit more shadow and black information than the S4. It's quite subtle, but in terms of overall clarity and color rendition, I think both of these cameras are quite comparable with each other and they really do a similar job at the end of the day. Now again, if you're not a camera expert, you're probably going to have a hard time identifying which camera is which. Now in terms of video, both of these cameras record 30 frames per second 1080p on the rear facing camera. Now there is a big quality difference from the front facing camera of both these devices. You'll notice that the both of the devices on the rear facing camera produce some really nice looking HD footage. Uh, both of them are really on par with each other and and in a well-lit situation like this, they both produce some pretty remarkable looking HD footage. Now, of course, one of the big features of the, on the HTC One's camera is its low light capabilities. By using the UltraPixel technology, it should produce some really nice looking images in really any lighting condition. So now we have a dimly lit situation as you see over here. And even though the S4 does almost pretty much the same job overall, when we start examining closely, you'll notice that the S4 tends to break apart some of the finer details in the image when you're shooting in poorly dimly lit situations, as uh, is typical of most cell phone cameras with 8 megapixels or more. Now, the HTC One, although it's not drastically better than the S4 in terms of low light performance, it does tend to retain detail a lot better, and there is definitely less noise in the overall image. So when you look at the darker parts over here, you'll notice that there's less overall grain and uh, fixed noise patterns and everything associated with most smartphone cameras that perform pretty poorly when it comes to dimly lit low light situations. Now the last thing that we're just going to talk about and compare is the overall battery life of these power hungry smartphones. The Samsung Galaxy S4 is using a 2600 milliamp hour battery which will get you about 12 to 14 hours of talk time and of course uh, those numbers are variable depending on how you use your phone. And the HTC One will get very similar performance. A lot of people have tested this phone out and found that it's a little bit more consistent than the S4 in terms of battery battery life, but again, expect to see somewhere around 14 hours of uh, 3G talk time. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a Samsung comparison without mentioning that you can open up the back and replace the battery if you need to. Additionally, the Samsung has a micro SD expansion slot, so you can expand the memory up to 64 gigs if you have that card. But other than that, guys, if you have any questions at all, make sure to leave it on a comment down below. And if you liked the video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and favorite the video as well, too. That helps us out tremendously. And I would love to hear your opinion opinion on which type of smartphone you prefer. Do you like the HTC? Do you like the Samsung Galaxy S4? Do you think either of them are not really worth the price of upgrading to whatever smartphone you currently have right now? Give me your thoughts. I would love to hear them. But other than that, guys, if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, Majid Sayyid 2, and we'll see you later. Take care.